Callback functions in JavaScript are one of the more difficult topics to learn in the beginning. So in this video, I want to explain callback functions in a way that anyone can understand. But before we get into callback functions, I want to review functions in JavaScript because without a solid understanding of how functions work, we can't really understand how callback functions work. So I'm going to start here by making a function called funny that accepts some text and creates a new piece of text that surrounds the text in laughing emojis and then console logs that new piece of text. So if I was to call the funny function with the piece of text, spiders are the only web devs that like bugs, then if we run this, we'll see this joke printed out to the console with laughing emojis around it because it's a hilarious joke. So when we call this function, input contains the value of that text that I pass in. Spiders are the only web devs that like bugs. Output is a new variable that contains that text surrounded by these new emojis, and then it gets console logged out to the term. I'm creating this funny function using the function declaration syntax, but I could also create it using the function expression syntax, and it would look like this, or I could use an arrow function and it would look like this. But they're all still functions, and for the sake of this video, they are all identical. Now there are some differences between these functions, but I'm not gonna worry about that in this video. I'll convert this function back to the function declaration syntax because I like to use the word function when I create my functions. But no matter how the function is created, we end up with a variable called funny that value is the function. And I could even create uh, another variable uh, funny again and set it equal to the value of the function so I could then call the function like this instead which would lead to the same exact outcome. Both of these variables are pointing to the exact same function. Uh, so this is pretty pointless in this case, but it does demonstrate how we can store a function in a variable just like any other value in JavaScript. And functions can accept parameters. Here it's accepting a text parameter, but I could also uh, return the output here instead of console logging it because functions can return values as well. And then I would change this code down here to accept the output and then I could console log it right here so that the behavior is still exactly the same uh, if I spell it correctly, but the logic has changed a little bit. And this can be nice because it made the function a little bit more generic and reusable. So instead of the funny function always being tightly coupled to console log, I can now use this function, take the output, I can still console log it if I want to, or I could use it for something else like displaying it on a web page. So this is more generic and reusable, but I don't have to do this with all my functions. For example, I create a function called funny spider joke and wrap all of this code inside of that function. And this is really tightly coupled to this exact joke and console logging it out to the console. So if I call this again, the output should be exactly the same. Uh, but this is just nice to do because it can organize the code a little bit. And if I wanted to do something like, uh, for example, do this 10 times, it'd be really easy now to create a for loop where I just invoke this function 10 times, and now I should see that joke get logged to the console 10 times. And now I could wrap this inside of a function as well. So function funny spider joke 10 times maybe. And then I'll invoke this function and the output should be exactly the same. We get the joke 10 times. So we can identify this function is a little bit more generic. We get to specify what the input is and it returns us a value we can do whatever we want with. Then this is a more specific function. We don't give it any input and it doesn't return anything. It just console logs the output. And again, this is a pretty specific function. We're not able to customize any of the details of the logic here because we're not passing in any parameters. But we could make this a little bit more generic if we wanted to. So instead of always printing this out 10 times, uh, we could change this to be uh, sometimes. 
and we can pass in the number of times as a parameter to the function. So instead of it always being 10, uh, we're gonna let that be decided by the code that is calling the function. So right here, I get to decide how many times the function is executed. So I'm gonna create another variable here for this. I'm gonna call it t and this time I'll just pass in two. So we'll pass in the t variable, that's value is two. When this gets called, times will be two and we should see this printed out to the console only twice. There we go. So by passing in a parameter here, we made this function more generic, which means that when the function is executed, the code that calls the function is allowed to make more decisions about how the function actually runs. In this case, just specifying the number of times it will actually execute the other function. But we can take this one step further. Instead of just calling the funny spider joke some number of times, we could have this function do something some number of times. We've passed in a number here, and that was pretty easy and simple. We've passed in text here, that was pretty easy and simple. Uh, but what if we just wanna pass in the function? So we allow the function that this is gonna to execute to be passed in, so it's not always gonna call the funny spider joke, it's gonna call whichever function we pass in. So this means that when we invoke the function, just like we passed in the number of times we want the function to be called, we also just pass in the function that we want it to call. So in this case, the funny spider joke function. And remember, this is just a variable that references the function. So just like we passed in the variable for the number two, I can pass in the variable for the function. And this will get stored as callback in the function. I just chose the name callback because that's pretty standard, but I could use any name here. And then because it's a function, I'm gonna call that function. I'm gonna execute that function. Times is a number, so I'm gonna use it as a number. I'm gonna put it in the for loop instead of that number literal there. And callback is a function. This is what I do with function. I put parentheses on the end so I can call the function. And this should run in the exact same way. We should get the joke printed out twice to the console. Console. One really important thing to notice here is that this funny spider joke function is being passed in, the value of the function is being passed in. I'm not going to call the function here, I'm not going to put the brackets on the end that will invoke the function because that will call this function, take the return value of the function and pass that into do something sometimes and callback will just end up as undefined and we'll get an error, actually I can run this, saying uh, we cannot or callback is not a function because it's actually undefined. So we're not trying to run the function and pass in the return value of that. We're trying to just pass in the function. We are not responsible for calling this function. We're gonna hand it off to do something sometimes. And this function now becomes responsible for calling the callback function. We don't call it, the other function does, and that's what makes it a callback function. And I'm gonna comment this out to show another example now. So I'm gonna call do something sometimes again. And before I created a variable to store the value of the number, but I could just pass in the number like this, like five, that's fine too. And I don't have to store the function in a variable. I can just pass in a function as I'm calling the other function. And this is often how you'll see callback functions defined. So we could use this with the function keyword, but oftentimes since ES6, it's more common to use an arrow function. Again, in this case, they are the same. Uh, but this is just passing in the function rather than storing it in a variable first I'm just going to create the function right here and pass it in so this is going to be a function that is just going to console log uh, did something I guess and this should get logged to the console five times because we're passing in five here we're passing in that function here and it'll loop over five times and call this function at each iteration so let's verify that and there we go did something five times now let's take this one step further. We're passing in a function here, an anonymous callback function, to this function right here. And functions can accept data through parameters. So we could actually have this do something sometimes function pass data back to this callback function when it invokes it. And this can always be done when a function is invoked. We can pass in a parameter to that function. So since this is the only place that function is gonna get called, this is the only place we could pass data to the callback function. Depending on how the function works, we might wanna pass different pieces of data. In this case, I'm just gonna pass in the value of i. So if we loop over a bunch of times, we'll be able to see which iteration we're currently in. And this is being passed in when we call the function. So when the function is invoked, I can say, uh, I'm just gonna name it num and uh, then I could console log that out with did something. So here I've created a function where I'm expecting to get a parameter passed in that's gonna be a number, and then I'm just gonna console log that out when it's actually called 
we're going to pass in the value of i. So the first time it will be zero, the second time it will be one. Uh, and because we're console logging this out, we should be able to see this right here. Logged out zero to four. Now let's look at a more practical example. I'm going to delete this code and I'm going to create uh, an array of things. Let's just do, uh, I don't know, emojis. So I have a laughing emoji and a poop emoji and uh, eggplant, why not? Put this in an array. And I want to have a function called for each that accepts an array and a callback function. And it should iterate over this array and call the callback function for each item in the array. So if I call for each with the array and a callback function, this function should be called for each item in the array and each item will be passed in one by one. So I'm just gonna call this item. And if I console log this out, I wanna see this in the console. Uh, so for each is responsible for calling the callback function, this one, for each item in the array and passing in each item. And this is a pretty basic for loop. So I could say uh, for um, item of array, call the callback function for each item. So if we pass in the array and the callback, it's gonna loop over it and call the callback for each item. So the result here should be that we log each item in the array out individually. And this is a really small example, a really simple example, but it's powerful enough that it's actually part of JavaScript. So if you have an array in JavaScript, you can just call array.foreach as a method and it works in pretty much the same way. So if we call this again, we'll get the same output, but we don't need to create a custom version of for each, it just exists. Callback functions can be used in really simple ways, but they're really powerful tools and appear all over JavaScript. And it's worth playing around with the different ways that you can use callback functions in the language because they appear in a lot of different places and can really make your code cleaner and more concise. So one big example is if we want to uh, map an array to a new array, we call the map callback function where we get an item, but we can return a brand new item. Um, I'm just gonna double up the items here. So I'm gonna create a brand new array based on the previous array where we're just gonna have uh, two of the emojis appear as each item. So if I console log this new array out now, and I'll delete the for each version, uh, we'll get a brand new array where each thing appears twice just by using a callback function where I return the item plus the item and using arrow syntax, I can make this even smaller. So without callback functions, to create a new array like this would take a few lines of code, but in here I can do it all on one line just because I understand that there is a map method in JavaScript and that it uses callback functions and I'm comfortable using callback functions. Using callback functions in JavaScript makes your code cleaner and more concise and they're pretty much unavoidable in the language. Not only because they're a really useful tool, but because sometimes you just have no other choice but to use a callback function, like dealing with some asynchronous code. And I'm gonna cover those use cases in my next video. So if you like this video, subscribe so you get notified when I publish that, and leave a comment letting me know if you'd like me to talk about any other topics. Yeah, I'm watching the rise, and I wouldn't say I'm shocked cause I'm hardly surprised. This one's for the ride, this one's for who knew I make it, just needed some time.